before I get into this review, I did enjoy it overall, but it's got some things that we got to talk about. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Will and welcome back to another spoiler review. Today I'm giving my spoiler review for Secret Invasion. Episode 6, the finale, entitled Home. This is of course a spoiler review for the finale of Secret Invasion as well for the entire series. So if you haven't watched the episode or the series yet, please pause this video, go check it out, make sure you form your own opinion on the series, and then come back and just hear my thoughts on it. And if this happens to be your first time checking out one of my videos, hi, my name is Will and I do geeky stuff on the internet. I do reviews and reactions, discussions, some gaming, some drinking. I just like to have fun. I just like to talk about the things that I love. And I hope you enjoy watching this video as well. And if you happen to enjoy this and you're interested in hearing my general opinion as a geeky bear on this vast, vast internet, please subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. It would really help me out and it would just help make this channel continue to grow as we quest for our goal of 650 subscribers this year. I don't know if we're going to hit it, but I haven't given up yet. So, okay, let's talk about the finale of Secret Invasion, a series that had a promising start and I think highlights an issue that all of the Disney Plus series have had up until this point. Brief overview if you haven't watched the previous episode at this point the scrolls have invaded Earth you know without it being completely Nick Fury's fault and it has come down to the main antagonist of the series his name is Gravik holding the planet hostage potentially starting World War III if Nick Fury does not give him the harvest which is a vial containing all of the DNA of any of the Avengers who spilled blood during the Battle of Earth and Avengers Endgame. The vial is given to him. He is imbued with the powers of all of the Avengers as well as Gaia who is also imbued with the same power and then we get a smackdown fight for about six seven minutes between the two of them and guy comes out on top at the same time fury and sonya are on a mission to save the president from scrawl roadie who has been the one kind of manipulating the president up until this point and ends up getting killed by fury once they're able to stop him and show the president like yeah roadie was a scrawl and i don't think he was expecting the outcome that came from that conversation yeah it's a pretty quick episode it ends up not having a happy ending like i thought it was wasn't going to be the series as a whole is definitely more so not necessarily about the scroll invasion that kind of took a backdrop to this sort of introspective into the character of Nick Fury and his major major flaws which have kind of dampened my opinion on the character at this point has definitely been a series mostly focused on uh, Fury owning up to his faults and his mistakes and continuing to make even more and that's most of the series. We got some new characters. We got some interesting developments in the series. Uh, most notably, the condition of Rhodey as once, his, once he is freed from his imprisonment due to the scrolls, it's kind of left unsure how long Rhodey was being impersonated by a scroll. Towards the end of the, f of the episode, once uh, they're able to free all the scroll captives from the compound, uh, we see that Rhodey is still in a, like a hospital gown when he is actually freed with most notably we see the return of Martin Freeman who comes back since he was freed after he was in the first episode and turned out his, he was being portrayed by a scroll as well. What's significant about Rhodey being in a hospital gown was like the last time he was in a hospital gown was during Captain America's Civil War and it's kind of implied that that's when Rhodey was taken by the scrolls and from that point up until now it's been scroll roadie the entire time which 
has imp interesting implications for Armor Wars whenever that movie, series, whatever comes out. That's the gist of the episode. Fury ends up leaving with Vara, his wife. They end up kind of making amends. Fury mentions something about potentially forming a peace treaty between the Skrulls and the Kree, and he needs Vara's help. Unfortunately, the president's response, I think his name's Ritson, his response to the Skrull invasion is not one of what I would call political decorum. He basically ends up putting out uh, a scathing, hateful speech about hunting down all the scrolls left on the planet and executing them, which leads to a lot of people not only killing scrolls but innocent people. And Fury rightfully calls him out on this. Definitely makes a note that that's a one-term president move which would make sense since it has already been confirmed that Harrison Ford is taking over the role of Thunderbolt Ross after William Hurt passed away and is supposedly going to be the president during the events of Thunderbolts when that movie comes out. <laughs> Gaia, who now is the only Super Scroll and has all the powers of the Avengers, most notably Carol Danvers and some of the Black Order from Thanos' crew and other people. She is now partnering up with Sonya, very similar to how her father partnered up with Fury, but not necessarily in a friendship way. They're both very upfront about the fact that they're both going to use each other for their own means in order to protect the planet and protect the people, the, the scrolls who are still on the planet. Yeah, and then Fury leaves. That's the episode. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you did it is it is very rushed. It is a rushed finale. It's a rushed series. Being six episodes, which all of the Disney Plus series have been six episodes except for She-Hulk and What If. Um, this is the ninth Disney Plus Marvel series that we have gotten. A lot of the complaints and concerns that people have had over the course of the Disney Plus era of Marvel television, this series, unfortunately, has really kind of proven all of those concerns true. I've reviewed basically every Disney Plus series that's popped up. I've done Star Wars and Marvel. Uh, if you want to go check out any of them, they are well on this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. And I've been very positive about all of them. And, I, and to be fair, I enjoyed Secret Invasion for what it was. The six episode run hurts the series. It hurts the entire story and really makes it difficult to get invested into it. Some of them have done it way better. I think it depends on the story that you're telling. I think WandaVision is still top three. Loki is still top three. Um, I personally enjoyed Hawkeye. I thought Hawkeye was great. Miss Marvel is definitely in my top five of the Disney Plus series. I did like She-Hulk. I do. I actually do like She-Hulk. Secret Invasion had a lot of promise. It did. Some, I think it did a lot of good. I think most notably introducing Olivia Coleman's character of Sonya Fallsworth, as well as Gaia. I think those are both interesting characters that have potential down the road. I also really like where this leaves Rhodey's character for whatever future events happen, because the implication that Rhodey was a scrawl since the end of Civil War puts a lot of things into a different light, different perspective, especially for Rhodey now that he is free and able to live his life again. How is he going to mentally deal with the fact that he missed out on huge events? He missed out on being there for his friend who died and did not get the chance to say goodbye. And it just puts a lot of interesting context to what Armor Wars is about now where the whole idea of protecting Tony's legacy is why Rhodey would seem much more motivated now because he wasn't there. That wasn't Rhodey. If, if the series and what is it, it is implying based off of what Rhodey is wearing, I think th that's an intentional design choice to have Rhodey in a hospital gown, unable to walk. That is, that is 100% specific this is what is going on with this character going forward those are good elements from the series that i think worked uh what didn't work for me for sure 
is the entire premise of the secret invasion. It's just like the scrolls were just a pawn in this entire thing. Rather, you were a pawn for Fury or you were a pawn for Gravik. It's like there's a lot of probably innocence mixed in there. And it also kind of makes me not like the character of Nick Fury anymore. <laughs> While I appreciate and found very interesting the whole retrospective of the character to see like, yeah, this character f***ed up a lot. But when you really looked at it, it, he doesn't seem like he ever gave a shit about the scrolls as a people. He used them to a means to an end. The, the sad fact is that he used the guise of friendship in order to get to that. At least that's how it's portrayed in the series. I still like Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson is still awesome, man. I think he portrayed the character very well. I just don't like the direction that they went with the character at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, all he did was just give a, a unmotivated warning to a dick president now. And he basically completely bolted off the planet at that point. So it's an interesting way of looking at the character. And the biggest issue is just the, the runtime. It is only six episodes. And while some of the other series work as six episodes, I think I think Hawkeye was perfectly fine as six episodes. I thought Miss Marvel was perfectly fine as six episodes. But when you look at other series like Moon Knight, most notably, six episodes is just not enough. And I think that's the issue going forward is that doing these small little mini series that have these huge ramification stories that require time to truly tell it. You give it like nine episodes to tell a complete story or don't tell a story at all. And like the flip side of that, when you look at The Mandalorian season three, they had like nine episodes and it felt like it just like meandered for three or four of them. This series could have benefited from a longer run, especially if you're telling something so in depth as such a huge infiltration by an alien race. I mean, like, that's a huge storyline that you had time to talk about, but you didn't. And I think that's the disappointing part about the series. Overall, I enjoyed the series for what it was. It was fine. It left some interesting breadcrumbs for future plot lines going forward. But the problem is, is that it's, it gives an Age of Ultron vibe when you are more concerned about the threads that you're putting out instead of the story that you're telling. And then you run the risk of where we are now with people getting bored with the series. It was a struggle, not only because of my schedule to do these reviews, but also just the motivation. Because as interesting as the premise was, six episodes definitely didn't feel like long enough. And then when people started exiting, like Maria Hill and, Ta and Talos, it started becoming a fact of like, I don't have any sort of emotional attachment to any of these characters at this point. <laughs> I don't. The closest one was Rhodey, and that's just because I think the series sets up his future involvements in the series in an interesting light now that we know that there's a strong potential that he hasn't been around for six or seven years and the person who was around pretending to be Rhodey was not Rhodey. That's where it gets interesting. Whereas with Fury, I don't really care like what Fury does at this point. I mean, he's proven that all the things that people talk about, like why he cares and his motivations for certain people, it makes you feel less of that when you see what he did with an entire race of people. It's like, where did that switch come in between how he was during Captain Marvel to what we got now? It just seems inconsistent or it just seems super manipulative, which I get it, the character is a super spy and that's what he has to do. Still, it just feels kind of off. The fight between Gravik and Gaia, it was cool, but I also it also kind of proves my point about they had so many names of people's DNA that were absorbed into both of them to create their super scroll forms. Half of those names just have the same damn powers. <laughs> Most of them, they had Drax in there. Why? Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. Hi, Drax. It was like certain things that just, it felt like could have been fleshed out even more. Like how I felt like Talos and Maria Hill's deaths just felt wasted. It, this finale really proves that point because they're both just dead. 
It wasn't like, oh, it was a ruse, they're coming back and stuff like that. I'm like, no, they're just, they're just dead. You know, I'm glad Fury and, and Var worked out their differences and decided to stay together. That's cool. Good for you, dude. But you kind of unintentionally or intentionally put out a hit squad on the entire race of people that you promised to help. And the only one that you literally saved and took with you was your wife. It just makes... God, it makes his character seem like such a dick. And, oh man, it's so disappointing. Again, there's a lot about the series I enjoyed. I liked the the aspect of who can you trust because it did keep me guessing multiple times watching the series. Then again, the other parts that really needed to hit just didn't. I don't think it deserved that really low Rotten Tomato score, score rating. It's online if you want to look it up. I'm not really going to repeat it here. But it definitely doesn't deserve that low as a rating for the episode. It's not a bad episode. It's just it's just okay. It's just a fine episode that highlights an issue that if they're really going to continue trying to do these series on Disney Plus, you have to put more thought and care into it. And you've got to make sure that you give the creative people involved in this, the writers, the actors, the writers especially, the, the amount of time, compensation, and respect that they need in order to produce good television. This obviously felt super rushed and that's just because they have this weird thing about doing six episodes. Six episodes is not enough time to tell some of these stories. Loki had some big ramifications, but you actually worked it out pretty well and made it meaningful and impactful. Hawkeye was, again, a personal story that just had a, a fun finale. That worked out as well. Same with Miss Marvel. Not end of the world craziness, but it was about a coming and made story for a young superhero those stories worked. This needed more time. And that's kind of the sad fact about it. It needed more time to flesh out a lot of the stuff that it was trying to do. Yeah, it just it just felt like a bridge for something else down the road. And like I said, my my one concern is when I go watch the Marvels, the version of Fury we're going to get in that I don't know how much of that version is going to be affected by the events of this. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, yeah, again, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed it. It was fine. It, that's the biggest thing. It was okay. It was fine. But if you're going to continue to do this, you really have to figure out and rework how you're doing these because you can't just keep getting by anymore. You've had a lot of stumbles and a lot of misses over the last few years. And if you really want to get to your get to your secret wars and Kang dynasties, you've been on top for a long time, Marvel. You got to figure out what you're doing from this point forward. You, a lot of the laurels got rested on. A lot of things got kind of wibbly wobbly out here and there. But I think you can bounce back. But I'm I'm more interested in see what happens with Rhodey than anybody else in the series. Take that however you want. So that's going to do it for this, this review of the finale. Again, it was more so about my thoughts and overall feelings about how everything was handled. I'm sure I missed a ton of stuff from the episode, but it really was a uh, sprint to the finish, and that's what it felt like. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Try to be respectful. Try to be nice about it. Again, a lot of people worked really hard on the series. I'm not trashing anything that they did. I just think overall, I think they just needed more time. But for what it is and what we got, it was okay. And that's where I'm going to leave you with here. So that is my review of episode six of Secret Invasion entitled Home. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for checking out this and all of my videos. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you're new here and you happen to enjoy this review, and if you want to check out some of the other videos I have on the channel, I have a ton of them on the channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and I would greatly appreciate it. And hopefully it allows me to continue to just post more and more. I'm still going to do it. It's just availability. That's the biggest thing. You can follow me on a lot of different social media platforms listed at the end of this video. Got a ton of videos on the channel right now that you're more than welcome to check out. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff if I'm not spitting. And until next time for the next one, most likely Ahsoka, 
I'll catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you did like this video, why not give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends? You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on my gorgeous little face right over there. You can follow me on all the various social media platforms right below. And last but certainly not least, if you've got a few extra minutes, why not check out one of the lovely videos floating right over here. Later.